Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Foreign Reacts. I do hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're going to be checking out a video. This one's titled Five Things Germans Have That Americans Have Never Seen. This is a personal perspective, so this is not like a based off of statistics, I guess. Uh, this is somebody's personal uh, experience. So um, we're going to be checking out what she has to say. So um, if you're new, to the channel please do subscribe we're trying to get to 19,000 subscribers and i definitely want you guys to be a part of it uh this is the month of august and i uh let's try to make this month as successful as possible lots of new uh comers and um, if you have any suggestions leave those in the comment section down below any country that you're from in europe africa um Asia, it doesn't matter. Leave your suggestions and I'll try to get back to those as soon as possible. Go check out the Instagram. Check out my personal channel. A lot of things. Go check them out. If you want to see them, check the link in the descriptions and also the comment section. But either way, guys, let's get right into this video. Hi everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube so, channel. If you do not know, now you do. Hey, you guys, what's up? Happy Thursday, everyone. We're hoping it's actually Friday today. That's interesting. Again, the second time in a row on the day that I'm saying I'm going to upload. Hopefully, this video is going to be a follow up video or like the counter video for my previous upload, which was five things that Americans have that Germans do not, I think is what it was called. And this video is going to be five things that Germans have that Americans do not. Not to say, as always, I have to put a little disclaimer because there's always going to be the few in the comment section that say, we have that, Haley. <laughs> it's just because where you live. Mm, it's just because of your age. It's just because you're a woman. There's so many people that are in my comment section that always tell me I'm wrong right. because there is right. a very rare occurrence of some of these things happening. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to write a comment in the comment section if you know any of these things, if you learned something new right, or right. if you missed something. So yeah, the first thing is going to be personal ID cards and Americans watching this you're probably thinking to yourself what do you mean personal ID cards yeah. Haley we have ID cards in the United States as well yes sort of but in Germany you are obligated slash required to have an ID of some sort usually in the form of a personal ausweis so a personal ID card or a Reise pass which is a passport there is a gray area for a driver's license, but every time that I've asked someone if you can or cannot use your driver's license as a form of ID, some people say yes, some people say no. So before you people in the comment section say, Haley, you're allowed to use your driver's license as ID in Germany, meh, meh, meh. I've mm. asked before. And so in Germany, like I said, That's you're tough. required to have an ID of some sort. In the United States, we don't have that requirement. Not to say that. Yeah, I get what she's saying actually right out the gate. Um, I do think that I guess more of uh, more 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 of um, to get business done in Europe, you'd likely need more uh, ID. Whereas in America, it's really you, you can go about doing things with your social security number. Um, so I do have a passport, obviously, because you can't travel without that. But I do believe that in America, it's less of importance to have a personal um, identity, um, like a passport. I mean, I think it's of less importance. I think so. Because even in Finland, I think you have a personal identity number. That's something that I'm supposed to get soon. Obviously, I'm living in Finland. I forgot to tell you all that. Right. So, yeah, I, I definitely catch what she's saying. People don't have ID cards because we usually use our driver's license as our IDs. But to exactly. have an actual plain ID isn't really that common because also a lot of times when you have a driver's license, you have to surrender, you have to give up your ID card. But going back to the point of Americans not having ID cards, they don't have a driver's license, they don't have an ID card, they don't have a passport, they only have maybe a social security card or a birth certificate. And that's it. Now, yeah. Their lives I didn't have a driver's license. A little bit more difficult, or they might have to, how do you say, have to jump over a few hurdles, or they might but they get by. consequences because of this. But they're perfectly legally in their right to do that. Now, yeah. if you're driving a car, if you're going right. to yeah. certain locations, going into certain buildings, you are usually required to have an ID. In Germany, a lot of people will carry, I believe, two different cards with them. I mean, do you have two? That's up for debate. But most of the people that I know have their personal ausweis and also their Führerschein, their driver's license, and they carry those things um, simultaneously. Not everyone, but most people that I know that drive um, carry both. And in the United States, 
States, if you have your driver's license, you're usually pretty okay. Like you don't need anything else. And when I was younger, I did have an ID card. Actually, I think when I was maybe 10 to 13, I don't remember what the reason was. Uh, I remember why I got it, you guys, actually. And it was when I was 13. And that was when my mom allowed me to go see movies by myself with my friends at the movie theater. And you had to be 13 years or older to see certain movies. And so I needed my ID card or I needed an ID card to be uh. able to go see PG-13 movies with my friends. But when I got my driver's license, I had to turn it in. And then I got my, I think it was my driver's license or my driver's permit. And my ID card was basically I don't know, shred up. I don't know what they did to it. Maybe they have a shrine for Haley Alexis at the Florida DMV. Oh, Never Florida? <laughs> Next point. A getränke Florida. Markt oder getränke Märkte. So drink markets or drink a drink market. In Germany, they have freestanding drink stores, which sort of would sound like the equivalent in English to a liquor store in the right. United States. But that is not what getränke Märkte, Markt are. Everything that your heart desires regarding, you know, fluids, they will most likely have at a Getränke Markt. I bet you I can tell you something they probably won't have. They ain't got no water. I, I can promise you, bro, I, I'm, I'm literally in Finland and I still have not seen a bottle of water, natural water in Finland. But I do know why they don't have natural water in Finland, because the, the, the water that you get from the tap is... Mm -mm. It is just oh, amazing, right? I got to make that culture shot video so soon for Finland, man. It's wild out here, bro. In Germany. And the difference between a liquor store is that, you know, the name, core difference, liquor is usually liquor. the main focus. I also just have to alcohol. point out something that I find to be really funny about German drink markets, and it's the expression and names that are associated with these markets. You can really see German humor coming out to um, shine here usually, but when it comes to the drink markets, I've seen some that are called like schlurfy, which means like a slurping, like when you're... <laughs> That's a schlurfy. They have one, I think that's called that's Zirkini, cool. which is pretty funny. There is um, the Getränke Quelle, which is called the Getränke or the Drink Source. There's a Getränke Oase, the Oasis of Drinks. <laughs> so like there that. are some pretty vibe. humorous markets that I have seen here in Germany, and I just think it's cute. So the next point, which I technically should say points because it's a multiple of things and it is the strawberry or it are how do you Ooh, it is it is it's are oh my gosh i'm struggling y'all germany start it, having these little strawberry huts popping up on the side of i would say country roads so you're probably not gonna see one on the autobahn i mean not to say never never say never because you might but usually on back roads you will find little strawberries popping up and what can you buy at those little strawberry huts you guessed it strawberries i have a few of these huts though and they sell different types of fruits and usually fruits not vegetables different types of fruits that you can only get during the summertime germany is a very seasonal food location i've talked about this before in a few of my videos there are some things that makes you it more interesting around, actually there are some items that you can't get year round which are strawberries or if you can get strawberries year round they're going to be extremely expensive vielä ehdit toteuttaa keittiö unelmasi saat epokeittiöt kesäalesta puoleen hintaan joustavalla kuukausi erällä and not the best consistency in my honest opinion. To sort of talk about something that is an equivalent or very similar to this in Florida, a lot of you guys always ask me for recommendations. Here's a recommendation if you go to Florida, y'all, really? and you're driving from the south of Florida on the west coast, and okay. you're driving upwards to let's say Orlando or Tampa, and you're okay. not taking the Tampa, shout out to Tampa. country roads. <laughs> Listen, there are a few places in Florida that I will tolerate, man. Like I do not, I'm not a Florida guy. Big X, South Carolina, we over there we still over there um florida is cool but man the, the sun just hits different in florida compared to south carolina matter of fact when i was in uh florida for christmas i've never spent christmas in florida before winter time i've never spent that in, in, in florida before but bro that thing was hot i mean in christmas it was hot that was like what the heck is this right it was a, it was a so different experience and before i actually spent uh christmas in florida i was in new york 
And I mean, it was a total difference because New York felt like South Carolina when it's uh, winter time. Just that New York would get a little bit colder than how South Carolina would. But at least it has a winter, bro. Like Florida ain't got nothing. Man, Florida is nice and everything, but it's just not my state. But shout out to Tampa because Tampa actually does get a little bit cold sometimes. But the rest of Florida, bro, like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, bro, like nah. I always recommend that to people. I think it's a lot prettier to drive that route. So you're going, let's say, 41 or 75. You're getting off, going on to 80 or 81. Then you're going to 27. Now, okay. on, I think it's 80 or 81. I don't know exactly, you guys. There's this little guy that sells fruits and vegetables on the side of the road. The best salsa in the whole state of Florida. I will fight you guys. Um, it is amazing. It is wonderful. It is delicious. And I know there are a lot of places like this, let's say in Florida, in the United States. So I think those would be our strawberry huts. They're just not as cute as strawberry huts because a strawberry looks so freaking cute in human form. So the next point you guys is going to be something that every single foreigner that has ever come to Germany talks about because it's not necessarily a concentrated Germany point, but it's very exaggerated in Germany. And it is right. the gym shoes versus outside shoes. Okay. I do think there are three major factors that influence this. The first one is society and upbringing. The second one is going to be fashion. And the third one is going to be if infrastructure slash driving. So in Germany, mm. there are different shoes for mm -hmm. different occasions of where you right. at, are at and what location you are in. You guys are probably thinking in the United States as well true but let's say that you are driving to the gym in the united states a lot of times you are going to have on your full gym outfit right. you're going to keep on the shoes that you wear in the car and you're going to wear those to the gym germans on the other hand will not do that they will change their shoes at the gym even if it looks like they have on sneakers and workout shoes they will still change into their inside workout shoes. In right. Germany, a lot of times you're gonna have to walk on sidewalk, in the mud, in the dirt, through leaves, through branches, through grass, um, on public transportation. You have no idea what you're walking through. Or how do you say, the probability of you walking through nastiness is more likely in Germany than in the United States. Not to say that one is dirtier than the other. It's just yeah, you're yeah, spending yeah. a lot more time on your feet, in my opinion, in Germany than in the United States. And so right. that is the driving factor, moving on to the fashion factor, because I think this is also something that is very different between the United States and Germany, is the simple fact that walking around and living your life in workout clothing is quite normal. Waking up, changing into <laughs> leggings, a sports bra, sneakers, and a tank top, and wearing that from morning to night, and even wearing that to, let's say, dinner, that's common in the United States. And so moving yeah. on to society and upbringing. From an early age, and I think this is the biggest you know, chunk of why this happens, in your right. house, you will get socks or shoes that you can wear instead of the shoes you wear outside. And moving on to daycare, you'll usually get slippers, house shoes, or stocker socken, stocking socks that you can wear in your daycare. And usually you'll come to the daycare, you'll change your shoes into your slippers. From your slippers, you'll change into your outside shoes, and then you'll go play outside. Then you'll come back to the daycare, you'll change back into your slippers, and then once it's time to go home, you'll take off your slippers and change into the shoes that you brought with you when you first got to the daycare. Some parents allowed their kids to use the same shoes, but it wasn't uncommon for parents to have an actual dedicated working out pair of shoes. Actually, I knew parents that would have the inside working out versus the outside working out pair of shoes. And then the shoes that they gave their kids to wear every day that were usually a lot nicer and cuter than the working out shoes. There would be kids with four or five different pairs of shoes that they had at daycare, you guys. It was mind boggling to me. Then you go and get a little bit older and you start having PE classes or you join a sports club or something like that you are usually required to have different shoes. Yes, and if you don't have different yeah. shoes, you'll be required to run barefoot or you'll wear socks. And so this is just something that is very repetitious in Germany. It is engraved in people's brains. Even Mike, where he puts his shoes on and then he forgets something inside and you can like literally see the invisible wall that he hits when he comes to the door and Take realizes that he has his shoes on. 
and he doesn't want to go through the door. It's like something's pulling him back and holding him back or preventing him from entering. And it's literally just his like internal, I don't know, watchdog barking at him to take off his shoes. Right. The last and final. That totally makes sense. I actually do believe that is a thing uh, in terms of with Germany, because I think it's the same over here in Finland. I think it's practically just a universal thing in Europe, uh, generally speaking, where um, shoe inside is totally a big N-O, N-O, right? So um, <clears throat> it's definitely relatable to me because what the heck, Finland has it too, man. Put that battery on charge. <laughs> Camera died. Either way, we're going to keep going. Thank you guys is going to be something that I think is pretty funny because of the backstory behind it. When okay. I first got to Germany, I live in Bavaria. I have to emphasize this because it's a little bit more common in Bavaria than other parts of Germany. I came to houses and all of the houses and even apartments had chalk on the door frame or above the door frame and it looked like this weird magical equation. It's like an equation. Harry Potter. I don't know if yeah. I'm going to find in a Harry Potter book and I honestly <laughs> It actually does look like an equation. <laughs> that all houses were getting the same construction work done at the same time because it usually happened, I believe, after January 6th, basically after Christmas this happened. And I'm like, is everyone, or does everyone know the same construction worker here? What is going on? Come to find out, the equation actually means, y'all, I'm trying my best here. 20 is the beginning of the year, or like the beginning of the, it, it's not a century, a millennium. We're in the 20, 2000s, y'all, that's a millennium, right? 2000, and then the star is the star of Bethlehem. And then you have the three crosses, which is the Trinity, so the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. Then you have C and B, which the 22 is the current people, year. There's a debate. I'm not here to debate with you guys. I'm just here to give both sides of the story. Some people say it means this word on the screen, which means bless the. Cry. Oh. May Christ bless his home. Oh, okay. His house. And other people say it means the three wise men, which is Casper, Melchior, Balthazar. And then the number at the end is the year that we are in. So it would be 20 star C plus M plus B plus 22. But in the United States, we don't really have this. There are some denominations. I believe it's a Catholic tradition. And so it's not that common to find it in the United States. What my mom did, and I know a lot of other people that do this as well in the United States, when they build their home from the fat, like foundation ground up, before they put the cement down, there was like this foundation of rock that you could write on. And so my mom took a marker and she wrote her favorite Bible verse on the foundation oh. of the house and then the cement went on top and that was basically to like solidify that this house is blessed which I don't know what kind of blessing it is because there are a bunch of spiders in that home <laughs> it's the blessing of um, arachnophobia for hating me but I do feel like this is something that is very common in southern Germany right. and you probably won't find it that often in the United States not to say that everyone in southern Germany is extremely religious because that is not the case. I know a lot of people that do this that are- And I don't really consider that religious. Like, I don't consider that religious. Like, I think I'm less sensitive to religion in the sense of uh, compared to the relatively other people. I think I can wrap the video up right now, but I think I'm less sensitive to religion uh, compared to a lot of people. A lot of people they think if you say, thank God, that means you're religious, but I don't think of that as religious. I have religious, it means you have to be having a relationship with a particular God, whether you're Hindu, uh, Christianity, Jew, Jewish, you have to have a relationship. That's what I cons consider, um, uh, you know, religious, because I can't con consider myself um, taken if I just went on one date. Like, it doesn't make any sense, you know what I'm saying? Or I see a, a woman and I'm like, okay, I want to marry her. I can't consider that you know, a relationship. You get what I'm trying to say? So that's my perspective of that. I, I don't really think, I think the word religious is thrown around so much that it's like such a, you know, whatever, but it's beautiful. I like that actually. I like that. I like that. It's it's really beautiful. Um, it's a good thing to do. I think it's really good, good to do, you know, speak positive, 
positively over your life you know I, I like it i like it even the thing that she said about writing on the stone and stuff like that I like it because there are a lot of good bible verses that I mean, probably most of y'all don't watch you read the bible but there are a lot of good bible verses man i'm telling you, you read that thing you're like man i feel motivated but either ways man uh we out of we out of here guys leave a like in the video subscribe i really appreciate you guys for watching i'm out of here peace